showtime! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the most memorable moments from the daytime Emmy-winning Beetlejuice animated series. Boy, am I in for some eye-popping entertainment! Number 10. The First Summoning The Beetlejuice series changed several elements from the 1988 film that inspired it. Namely, Beetlejuice is now Lydia's friend rather than an antagonist who wants to marry her. However, the show doesn't forget its roots with Lydia singing Deo in the first episode. She also summons the ghost with the most using three familiar words. Actually, it's the same word repeated three times. Though I know I should be wary, still I venture someplace scary. Ghostly haunting, I turn loose. Beetlejuice! 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 While Lydia regularly calls upon Beetlejuice throughout the show, the pilot had the best buildup with dark shadows, creepy music, and a haunting rhyme. Once Lydia completes her chant, her room and wardrobe are transformed as the music cranks it up to 11. <laughs> Animation studio Nelvana went the extra mile with this sequence, culminating in Beetlejuice arriving at the party. I'm ready to party! Number 9. Claire's Comeuppance Beetlejuice may be vile, but nothing is more sickening than Claire Brewster's snobby attitude. I want a haunted house to be a success. Like, since you're talking to your drawings now for companionship, tell this one it is like the ugliest thing I have ever seen. Whenever the upper-class Claire clashes with the gothic Lydia, Beetlejuice is never too far away to serve her just desserts. Next up! The While there are several examples, the most satisfying instance involves a nightmarish roller coaster. After Lydia remodels her not so scary haunted house ride, Claire is characteristically critical. I don't need you or your disgusting doodles! <laughs> Rather than send her on the real ride, Beetlejuice puts her on the fast track to the Netherworld, where she encounters Jacques the Skeleton, Ginger the Spider, and a sandworm as a grand finale. <laughs> The hair-raising ordeal scares Claire away from working with Lydia on any more school projects. Although, if you ask us, this should be an actual theme park experience. Number 8. Nothing to lose your head over Lydia's parents are constantly exposed to the anarchy of the afterlife, yet they remain oblivious to what's right under their noses. Charles, look! Costumes! You know what they say, when in France, do as the Romans do! On a vacation to the Netherworld, Delia and Charles nearly lose their noses, along with the rest of their heads. Stumbling upon what they think is a historical reenactment, the couple meets skeleton versions of Napoleon Bonaparte and Marie Antoinette. Bonjour, monsieur. I am Marie Marionette. And who might you be? Me? I'm out of here! We get why Antoinette is headless, although Napoleon died from stomach cancer. Historical inaccuracies aside, Delia and Charles are headed to the guillotine next. Dear, first prize is a family-sized vegematic slicer! Delia in particular cracks us up with her cluelessly chipper attitude, even when blindfolded as a blade looms over her neck. Were it not for Beetlejuice's feet and Lydia's driving skills, Delia and Charles would have become permanent neither world residents. Number 7. Life Without Beetlejuice In this parody of It's a Wonderful Life, Beetlejuice sees what the netherworld would be like if he were never born. Or would it be if he had never died in this case? Nobody wants me here! Not Jacques, not Ginge, not the monster across the street, not even Lydia! I wish- No! Wait! How? Don't say it! I wish I'd never met any of them in the first place. Let's just say if Beetlejuice ceased to exist. He finds that his friends have become vain jerks, although honestly, they're all more successful without Beetlejuice around to cause mischief. Ugh, another fan dying to meet me. They're always underfoot. Hey, get off of my face, Ginger! There is one exception. Lydia hasn't lost her gothic flair, but her confidence has been drained with no Beetlejuice to liven things up. Uh, my report is titled... Our friends, the Garden Slugs. <laughs> Lydia's so uncool! Not like you, Claire! 
When he approaches her, Lydia doesn't recognize him, but there's still a connection that encourages Beetlejuice to get his old afterlife back. <laughs> hey, you laugh, babes! <laughs> sure, you're funny! For all the gross-out humor and puns, this friendship gave the show a beating heart. Number 6. Arriving in Ooze Beetlejuice spoofs The Wizard of Oz in this episode, which casts Lydia as Dorothy. Lydia's arrival in Ooze contains some of the best jokes, most notably a pretty accurate description of almost every politician who ever lived. As mayor of this unfair town, I promise to raise taxes, abuse my power, and make your lives as miserable as possible. If only they were all this honest. This mayor won't be seeking re-election, as Lydia inadvertently drops a school on him. Lydia is introduced to the beetle-like munchkins, who work in a few clever gags about the gray areas of the public domain. Just follow the gray asphalt road! Follow the gray asphalt road? We sing, but we're not allowed. They can reference L. Frank Baum's books, but singing any songs from the MGM musical is off-limits. From there, Lydia encounters several familiar faces filling Oz roles. Are you okay? Is he gone? Is who gone? The, the, monster. the munchkins also resurface, although they don't stick around long thanks to a hungry Beetlejuice. That's funny. Where'd all the munchkins go? Uh, oops. Excuse me. How did it go in there? Number 5. Meeting Edgar Allan Poe Beetlejuice was bound to cross paths with Edgar Allan Poe eventually. Ah, sir, and Poe. Yeah? Well, don't expect me to give you any money! No! Edgar Allan Poe, you insipid tweet! In death, Mr. Poe lives out his stories, searching for his lost Lenore. During his lifetime, Poe's writing didn't make him an especially wealthy man. We guess he collected residuals in the afterlife, as the late poet throws cash at Beetlejuice. Looking to exploit his wealth and sadness, Beetlejuice keeps the weeping Poe around. So, chump! Tell me more about this Lenore, babe! Oh, Lenore! Why didn't you answer the door? The writer comes with some emotional baggage, including a rhyming raven, a telltale heart, and a swinging pendulum. Who says Beetlejuice can't be educational? I'm about to be cut out of the picture! <laughs> The nightmares that Poe has unleashed seemingly come to an end when he's finally reunited with Lenore. Since Poe wasn't exactly known for happy endings, though, Beetlejuice can't quite escape the cycle. <laughs> Number 4. Lies Break Out In the neither world, lies manifest in the form of ghostly skeletons. Every lie means another skeleton is added to your closet. As you can imagine, Beetlejuice's closet is fuller than others. Beetlejuice, what do you have in your closet? Oh, just some talking dolls I bought for the neighborhood kids. <laughs> I like to do a good deed, you know. Running out of room, the skeletons inevitably break free. In addition to airing Beetlejuice's dirty laundry, one of Lydia's lies gets out as well. That one was yours, babes. The concept is creative, and the skeletons are among the show's eerier creatures with whispery voices that flow through the air like a chilling breeze. While the skeletons expose Beetlejuice for the scoundrel he is, they also bring out his softer side, revealing that he actually likes the long-suffering Jacques. Hello, hello? Beetlejuice really likes you, but he pretends he doesn't. Do I know you? Lydia is his best friend, though, a truth that ultimately saves the day. Shucks, Lydia, you're my best friend. Hey, that truth stuff really works. You better try it quick. Number 3. Shop Till You Freak Business isn't booming when Lydia and her friends open a creepy clothing store. Looks like nobody likes my designs but us. Aw, what do we know? To attract more customers, Beetlejuice comes up with a hypnotic jingle that entrances everybody in town. Watch my watch! And repeat after me. Shop till you freak at the spooky boutique. Shop till you freak at, at the spooky, spooky boutique. Sales go through the roof, but supply and demand can be dangerous. We don't 
don't know about you, but the lyrics, shop till you freak at the spooky boutique, have been living rent-free in our heads for over 30 years now. We'll just be going about our day-to-day -day lives when suddenly, our subconscious will send this infectious song up to headquarters. Shop till you freak at the spooky boutique! We can't say that we were possessed like the people of Peaceful Pines, but this moment definitely left a lasting impression. In that sense, perhaps Beetlejuice really does have mind control powers. You might say it moved to a new location. Ooh, where is it? I'm dying to get there. <laughs> well, let's just say you'd have to. <laughs> Number two, a twisted crossover. Watching TV, Beetlejuice happens upon the chromosome, a send-up of the Twilight Zone. Submitted for your approval, a plea for help, the lonely cry of a man on the fringe of insanity. Hey, I remember this guy. His show used to scare the sockets off me. No matter how many times Beetlejuice changes the channel, he can't escape host Todd Sperling, who pulls him into the television. The Rod Serling caricature reveals that the characters he created have taken over his show, enlisting Beetlejuice's help. You've heard of characters taking on a life of their own? Ima did. She became so strong that she started writing herself. Naturally, I tried to rewrite her, but she resisted. Soon she was out of control, and her ego is getting bigger every day. The premise is inventive enough to be in an actual Twilight Zone episode. There's a clear admiration for what the episode is satirizing with a plethora of in-jokes and fourth wall breaks. Guess I'll see if the doctor's in sane. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a Twilight Zone parody without a twist ending. The episode amounts to a conclusion that not only pays homage to the Twilight Zone, but also the second greatest horror anthology series of all time. Alfred Hitchcock presents. Lids, say something. All right. Good evening. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Prince Vince. It's no coincidence that Vince resembles the titular character from Tim Burton's Vincent. Pleased to meet you, your highness. Highness, no. Lowness would be more fitting, Lydia. Then let's get back to making you cheery instead of dreary. Cursed Village, a nod to the musical Brigadoon. You mean, if we're still here when everyone in Brigadoon falls asleep, we'll disappear with the town? For an eternity! And frankly, I don't have the time! Getting cancelled, a reminder that network heads know nothing. Mr. Monitor, I think you're overreacting. Our show is great the way it is. And after all, isn't quality the most important thing? Huh? Ratings are the only thing. Bringing a tree to life. We're surprised that Beetlejuice didn't kick this tree over. Ooh, a skateboard! Huh? Whee! <laughs> hey, don't run out on me! Beetlejuice's two sides. The series ends with double the Beetlejuice and double the fun. Two Beetlejuices? That two-bit baby smoocher has really gotten on my bad side. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jackass. Yeah, he said it. Helping Lydia to brush up on her Shakespeare, Beetlejuice introduces her to characters like Hamlet, both parts of Henry IV and Julius Caesar, leading to some of the funniest wordplay in the entire series. Julius, Caesar. Ah! The standout encounter is with Puck from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Growing annoyed with Beetlejuice, the fairy makes him look like a donkey, or as Beetlejuice puts it, Nobody makes a jackass out of me! For young viewers who had already seen the live-action film, this might not have been on par with Michael Keaton's F-bomb. Nice f***ing model! For a cartoon aimed at kids that aired on Saturday mornings and weekday afternoons, though, you have to wonder how this made it past the censors. Regardless, the episode encourages kids to study Shakespeare, so parents can't complain. Somehow I don't think Beetlejuice ever helped Shakespeare with his homework. Yeah, yeah, come on, ow, ah! What's your favorite Beetlejuice episode? Let us know in the comments. How about a classic cartoon ending, Liz? Can do. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice! That's it, kids! Ah! <laughs>
Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.